Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to show you this warp distortion text effect in Adobe Photoshop. This is going to be a very easy tutorial. We're going to be using the liquify tool for this. This is a very popular text effect that I've seen over the past year and it's just everywhere. So I thought I'd make a video on it. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and comment below. And yeah, with that being said, let's get straight into it. So right here, I got that thumbnail. Um, I think it looks really, really good. And so I'm just gonna show you how this is done. Um, it's very, very simple. So we're gonna go to file new. Um, and let's just say I want to make this for Instagram. So I'm gonna make sure it's 1080 by 1350. That's a vertical Instagram post. Um, I'm gonna link a bunch of fonts that you can use. I recommend using tall fonts for this type of effect, but you can do whatever you want. So I'm just gonna type in create press control T and just drag so that um, it scales up. And so this font I'm using is called Kaluna. Once again, I'm gonna link everything down below so you guys can check out um, tall fonts that I would recommend and use personally. So right here, we got it. Um, I'm gonna go to filter liquify. And when it asks to convert to smart object or rasterize, you wanna convert to smart object. Um, you're gonna see the benefits after you apply the effect, but essentially smart objects will allow you to disable filters whenever you want. So what this means is if you apply the effect to the text and you decide you don't like it anymore, you can just disable the effect and the original text layer just appears. But when you rasterize it, you can't do that. And it's very hard to undo any mistakes you make. And you have to start from the beginning. So I'm gonna press, so uh, I just converted a smart object and now the liquify panel should pop up. Um, so right here, we wanna select on the first um, option. So forward warp tool. For the size, I would actually make it very, very small um, in comparison of the height of the text. So I'd say like make it take up like one sixth of the text um, height. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, something like that. Um, there's no exact number. Um, as for the pressure and density, you want it around 70, 75. Um, so just gonna increase it a little bit. So let's just say 73. Um, there's a few ways you can do this, obviously. The most popular way I've seen is just one long just line in the middle. But the issue with this is you just can't really read the text. Like the first letter looks like an E, so that's not good. So what I actually like better is just one long line at the top and one at the bottom like that. You can also just go halfway like this. I think this uh, allows you to actually see the text a little bit better. And if you like lower the pressure and density, when you actually drag your mouse across it, the distortion effect is gonna be applied less. So if I do like 50 pressure, you can see it's not as much when I drag it across. Um, another tip I have is if you wanna create straight lines, so right now this is kind of like freeform, um, you can click on the start point. So let's just say I wanna start here and hold shift and click on the end point. So right here, it makes a straight line. Um, so I think this is just a cool way to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create my uh, preferred style. So if I'm cool with this, I can do that. With this thumbnail, I just went uh, one way right and one way left. And also the brush size was a lot smaller for this. So it's gonna create a different effect. And yeah, um, as for the presentation of this whole thing, it's pretty simple. Uh, basically, I just selected a colored background. So you can right click on the background. So let's double click this first. We're gonna right click, press blending options, color overlay, let's just say I want that same red again. So something like that. I wanna duplicate this layer, so press control J and press control T uh, to resize. And we're just gonna take up the whole thing right here. We're gonna move this top layer to the bottom. and then lower the opacity of it. So I think in this thumbnail, um, the text is actually a uh, red, like the background text. So you can even go to blending options here, go to color overlay and just make sure it's a different red. So something like this and boom, that's sort of how I created it. So that's about it for the effect. There is a way to add a little bit more to the effect. So even before you start, so let's just say type in the text, right? Before you do any of the liquefying, what you can do is actually use some of the warp tools. So you want to highlight your text and press right here. So these are the warp text options. 
So personally, I use um, Wave a lot and Rise, but obviously you can select any you want. Uh, let's just say we do, let's just say we do something like this where it's sort of slanted one way. Uh, we can do the same effect. And this just adds a little bit more character to um, the text. Obviously you don't have to do this. I'm also going to make sure the brush size is a little bit smaller. So I'm going to click here, hold shift and click at the end point. Do the same here. And you can see what that does. So this is great for like merchandise, um, just thumbnails like this. And yeah, if you have trouble coming up with color schemes um, after you're done, I would recommend just going to gradient map and selecting through these different colors. Some work better than others. I actually found my thumbnail colors through this uh, preset. I think this one, and then I just changed up the colors. You can also go to hue and saturation and just sort of go through and cycle through the colors as well as use the color balance tool to adjust the colors. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. This is a very simple tutorial. Once again, everything's in the description. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe if you enjoy videos like this. And yeah, my name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.